Okay, look, uh, black man. Yeah, what's up? Well, uh, what, that's, that's what we're trying to find out. There's a lot of things up in the world. You you got to pick a topic. We'll just do one. You know, we might do this weekly. I don't know what we're going to do, but um, I don't want to do COVID. Forget that. You know what I mean? I don't want to do. Yeah. I don't want to do new the new bubonic plague that's supposed to be happening too. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's something new now. Oh, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be China's. Oh man, I, I China's. I look. Listen, no, let's not do that either. And I'm not going to do the fact that the Indians they they're, they're taking the serum, you know, for, for people that had it and put into other people to 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 work. And that seems to be working right for them, you know. But what I can tell you about the Indians, if they say they got a solution, they actually do have a solution. That's all I know about India. I've been to India. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. They don't play. Man, I, I'm in South Africa. When they say, oh, 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 oh we, we can find a solution, they be lying. They don't. <laughs> 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 but, but, <laughs> man, unbelievable. Well, what's happening in your world, man? You you pick, you pick you pick a topic. I'll try to I'll try to wax philosophical on whatever topic you pick. <laughs> if I can. Okay, y'all. The way I see it is that um, I'm trying to figure out how all of a sudden Black Lives Matter. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, I know on many a person's mind of color and culture, they're probably trying to wonder, why, why do we matter so much now? Like, why now? That's a good question. Well, you know, some somebody was saying, and I actually shocking in a way. But and what's even more shocking is nobody's really talking about it, though. Like everybody's just rolling with it, which I am too. We're all rolling with it. It's like, okay, we matter now. Okay, cool. Then you know, I'm gonna get this, and you know, there's more opportunity for that. And hey, you but know, that's, isn't that the problem? Businesses are like, yo, support me. I'm good, yo. Well, you but, know? but isn't that the problem? The problem is that the people, the, the people who it should matter, who it should matter for, they're not going to get anything out of this. Other people are going to come a, a step and get and get stuff out of this. You know, there's the yeah, problem. Well, that's that's what I, I see. I agree with you. I see like a mad dash for like, yo, there's gold in them <laughs> them their hills, and everybody's going for it. And it seems like not that we're we're not aware of it. We are aware of it, but we're like, yo, this window's gonna close faster than it did with comedy in the nineties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we gotta hit it hard. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Ah, uh, but see, the, 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 I think that's gonna exasperate this thing. Is the is the virus? The virus ain't going away. And if the, if this new season comes on, then the virus doesn't go, and another virus is on top of that. As long as the people are isolated, they they gotta. I don't know. I I, have, I don't. I, you know, I'm baffled too. You yeah. Know? Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I know we don't want to really deal with COVID, but, you know, Rona seems to just come up every single time with everything. It's like, oh, no, nah, don't forget me. I'm Rona. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, also what I was thinking, actually what I was thinking about Black Lives Matter really has to do with, has to do with, um, uh, remember in the 60s you had Black Power. Right. And it's, it's, it's almost like, you know what it's like? If I look at Black Power, if I look about Occupy Wall Street, right? And now, right. I look, now I look at Black Lives Matter. To me, they are all almost like slogans that didn't have a follow through or, or at least the power structure, if you want to put it that way, could co-opt it. There's yeah, the problem. absolutely. You know, so if I look at those, no, no, I'm just picking those three because I want to make it, because to me, black power was black power. That was totally black. You know what I mean? And we yeah. were serious. And, and I can see where it scared a lot of people. In fact, it scared a lot of people because we didn't have, we didn't have the, the we didn't have, we didn't have the political, well, we never had the political power, but we didn't have no financial power, stuff like that behind it. Even though we sort of did, because back there in the 60s, you did have some, just financial stuff didn't change till 70s. As far as access yeah. to money. So we had a little something, but we just didn't have, I don't want to say the leadership, but people were so into, how do you say this? Um, uh, uh, I want the dogma that they couldn't, they, they weren't flexible to, to right. work with everybody. So, so you had, you had people, you had people 
who who were like Martin Luther King. Then you had people who were like you know Malcolm or something like that. Then you had people forget Malcolm. Malcolm was going by that. Then you had people like like coming off of Martin Luther King. But then you had then you had you know the H. Rap Browns and 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 the Stokely Carmichael's. Um, yeah. And then what really happened, because I saw this happen really in in the late 60s for sure, the state came down real heavy. You know, Hoover, he's the guy, yeah. you know, they, they he started with, with pers- trying to persecute, uh, what do you call it, or did persecute, um, um, uh, what was his name, Marcus Garvey. And he, he, he ended his life persecuting, you know, Martin Luther King. So he was yeah. always on a black case, you know, and not to mention all that stuff about the marijuana laws and all the rest of that stuff and whatever. But you know, he's stone cold racist, um, uh, whatever, self-hating homosexual, whatever the heck he is, you know. Yeah. But, but because when he saw those little kids saying black power, you know, when I mean, the worst thing that, the, that I don't the worst thing I think the Panthers did was to be on television and have the little and, and the little kids going black power so you know you can imagine the kind of fear not in white people but in the power structure do you mean they're going to grow that's why they killed fred hampton he but that yeah. boy was young they, we yeah. got we got to kill him in the in, in the cradle <laughs> you mean like 22 yeah they got to kill him in the cradle yeah. And they they always have a thing co opted. I'm, I'm sorry to jump off topic, but you know, I'm really pissed off at this whole Fred Hampton movie that's coming on. I know people that's, that's in and still working on it and stuff like that because of the actor they have to, to play Fred Hampton. The reason why I'm pissed off because you know they they get the English actor, you know the guy that did, the Danny Kaluuya. I don't think he's a very good actor, but leave, leave that out of it. But the problem with things like about, yeah, but did the problem. See that um, Samuel Jackson said that they're cheaper. That's why they used them. Well, the, 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 he's something else. He's a hustler, you know, because he basically built, begged uh, Jordan Peele and used the black thing and all that stuff. But if you look at him other films, like that, like I seen him, he did. I think it was the Willow, Widows, something like that. Terrible yeah. acting, terrible, really oh, yeah, bad. Yeah, he wasn't good in Widows at all. No, you know, he was. He was. You know what he was doing? He was imitating Tim Roth. Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and the, the 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 lie to me or, or whatever it is, but the, that, that's what I'm saying. When you you know you know you can't act because you're doing it, but that's not the problem I have with it. The problem I have, when you have somebody like that, when he goes out on tour, they're going to be asking him about Fred Hampton. Now he's going to be the voice of of interpreting Fred Hampton. Yeah, it's like um, the sister that did Harriet. Yeah, what does she know about Harriet Tubman? What does she know about the black struggle? She she didn't don't even like black people, you know. Yeah. And see, that's the thing, like, like you know, and and I know we haven't said it yet, but ADOS, that's real. That's a real thing. And it's funny because, you know, all my life, you know, I couldn't identify it mm-hmm. as a particular thing. There you are. But you knew it was inside. It's like there's a certain level of understanding yep. when you do come from the, being from the descendants of chattel slavery. Yep. Versus everybody else. Yep. And it's and I remember I had um friends in high school and college, you know that, and you knew some of them too. And mm-hmm. some of them, you know, they were ADOS, mm-hmm. and some of them were not. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, some of them don't seem to like, mm-hmm. you know, connect fully to like our struggle exactly as as you would think they should. And it was like, well. Couldn't, you know, put my finger on it. But then, you know, over time, you realize it's like, oh, OK, well, you know, they're like maybe the first generation or the second generation to see it here in America. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we go four, five, six, you know, eight, ten generations deep. That's right. They, they, they know nothing. They know nothing about racism, white supremacy. When I say know nothing, they may know through colonialism. They might say they, they know discrimination. They don't know hardcore racist white supremacy as American style. Even, even I, mean, I live in, you know, I live in Africa. I'm, I'm telling you, even them, they, they have the colonial thing. They don't really, the way I like to say, especially because, South, because I'm in South Africa, I could say it this way. See, when South Africa, they had basically, I'm just going to make up numbers now. They had basically, say, 30 million Africans serving 5 million, you know, uh, Africanas. Okay, let's just say that. Just, just, just as a number, right? Yeah. Well, so when when they when they basically, by the way, uh, South Africa did not 
uh, and and they're a little apart. I think they did not win liberation. Let's put it that way. It's an armistice. It's like World War One. It's like an armistice. It's like Korean War. It's like an armistice or something like that. So don't they 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 did not win no apartheid struggle nothing like that. The stuff still goes on, but that's not the point. But in America, it's like you had say five million. I'm just making up a number. You had five million black people servicing or being or being trampled on by thirty million white people. I'm not, yeah. Like I said, I'm just making up numbers just to just to do it that way, and it's a totally different thing. You can't you can't compare the two, you know. Yeah. Because when if we went out, we went out a little struggle. In fact, every time we want to struggle, ADOS brings us out. Very, you know, what happened? Soon as Lyndon Johnson made that speech in what '65 and said, "Look, we're we're going to give you some affirmative action because we don't did you we don't did you 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 folks wrong, you know." So we're going right. to give you some affirmative action. Not six months later, some white judge or whatever ever says, "Oh, affirmative action also means women and and everybody else." So what yeah. we're supposed to get, we never even got. And then. Yeah. Then they use that to bludgeon us. Oh, but you got affirmative action. You got affirmative action. Meanwhile, you got somebody like Kamala Harris coming in. You know, like, I'm black. <laughs> what? Yeah, okay. yeah, you are black, but you're not. You know, or forget Kamala. You got Barack Obama coming. In. I'm black. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah, I just married a black wife. I've been with these white girls all my life, but hey, you know what I mean? I got a white, but I got a black wife. Now, don't we look good? And I got a glib tongue. You know, come on. You know, it's like it's ridiculous. You know. And so people don't know. They, 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 you know, everybody goes for the headline. I don't know how to, I, I was just to explain it. Good slogan. We're gonna go with the slogan. Yeah, but you know the crazy thing about it is that, like you said, in '65 that happened. So for me, you know, I was a baby mm. when that happened. So I grew up in a generation where, you know, my um, peers were like first generation Americans as people of color immigrants. Mm. Like you said, like a Kamala Harris or yeah. something. Yep. But we have to grow up and walk the same path together, mm-hmm. but they don't have the same history. Lineage. We, we, call, we call it lineage, yep. They don't have the same lineage. Yeah, the same lineage, yeah. The lineage, the history, the knowledge, you know, so that when they put things on, on TV, like Eyes on the Prize, Mm. They saw it with different eyes than I saw. It. Exactly, exactly. You know, I remember this is. I remember undergrad school. I was living in college. It was interesting. It's like one year. There was this, there was this sister, right? She was she was yeah. talking talking black and everything. You know, just just you know, you, you, you can tell somebody been in the hood, it comes from the hood, whatever have you. But then yeah. I think Bob Marley hit big, and everybody, all the Jamaicans, all of a sudden got this Bob Marley pride, you know. Yeah. And the next year, she keeps, when she came back from break, she was speaking all this Jamaican accent. I said, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> It's like whoa, so they could assimilate back then, but but now they just come out with their flags. That's my whole thing on the census. On the census, they have they, they, there's a category they have. I don't know if you fill out your census. It says uh, black yeah, Afri- yeah. black African American, right? Then they have a yeah. they have a space under there where you can be specific, right? Yeah. So I've, yeah. I, I so I put on you know uh, I put a uh, American descendant of chattel slavery or American descendant of slavery rather, and so the thing is most people don't even do that. But if they, if you had to, if you that's the point you have to be specific. If you're black, what kind of black are you? You know what yeah. I mean? Are you Kenyan American yeah. black? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are are you are you are you Trinidadian American black? You know, what yeah. kind of black are you? Then then when you go to ADS, what kind of black are you? Well, I'm an American black. Oh well, there's a lot of men. no, no, no. I'm I'm an American black that's descended from chattel slavery. What's the, that? That's what that's my designation. Now all of a sudden, everybody gets pissed off at that. Niger- yeah. Everybody's get. Wait a second. We I can really we actually really name ourselves and you you, but you run around naming yourself. You're you're Brazilian, you're American, you're whatever. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, we can't I'm be Syrian or I'm from Ghana or I'm from Belize or. You know, I'm from Puerto Rico, I'm from Dominican, whatever, you know. And we can't be ADS. We don't. And the funny thing here's, here's, here's what messes everybody up. You know, messed me up for a while. In fact, I'm still sort of rebelling against if you look at my, my, my things. You know, it's like, so what's your flag? Uh, a flag is the American flag. What? Yeah. Because we have so many things about the American flag. So I, I, to tell you the truth, when I do my ADR stuff, I have, I have an American flag there, yeah, but I have that big uh, red, black, and green <laughs> flag. Oh, yeah, I love that flag. <laughs> with, yeah. the, with, the, with the stars, but I got the one with the stars. <laughs> the yeah, stars yeah, that's the, the one that I love. I want to use that in a piece 
in a uh, um, creative piece mm. um, visually someday, but I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. Mm. Well, I know where you can get plenty of them. I know the guy that sells them on 125th Street. You know, I got his number. <laughs> He'll yeah. get it for you. He okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth, though, because, I mean, when you look at those stars and stripes, and they, you know, talk about, you know, the red, white, and blue and stuff, it's yeah. like, well, yeah. we bled so much for the red, white, and blue. How could we not exactly. say that that's part of us? But you know, we did it. We, we, we again, we had those sixties. We had we we had that ideology. We can't, yeah. you know, they, they beat up us. I remember at BAI, we had this thing where, where where finally I said they said no. Bernard finally came up with the thing: wash the flag. Let's wash the flag. You know, we're gonna wash the flag. You know, instead of just outright, you know, rejecting it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, look, black man. Let me uh, let me end it here. You know, we could talk more. You know, I um, mean, you know, this is our this is our test first inaugural. I might put it up. Let's see how it's, the sound sounds. Um, okay. When when do you want to do this again? What's, it's up to you because I'm co- I'm I'm isolated. I'm in, I, in fact I'm in the woods right now. I'm in I'm in I'm in a place called Olivet, Missouri. I'm in outside of St. Louis. I I got nothing but woods. I got I got foxes. I got uh, coyotes. I got you know squirrels and and and, and rabbits and deer. That kind of thing. <laughs> so <laughs> not with anybody. <laughs> so it's up to you. You're you're in the city, man. I had to get out and see. It seems kind of they had a fearful vibe in, in New York City, man. I, I I couldn't take it, man. At least yeah. I- well. I'm glad that um, you just mentioned that because I've been noticing, you know, after looking at a lot of your pieces that, you know, when you're in St. Louis, if you, you, you come off a, a certain way, mm. when you're in Virginia, you come in another way. Mm. And when you're in New York, I can say, yeah, I know he's in New York right now. He didn't even say it, but I know he's in New York. Mm. Man, I know he's in New York. It's the vibe, and man. the funny thing is that, you know, the rest of the crew, the rest of the boys, you mm. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got one in Florida, mm-hmm. you got one in New York, mm-hmm. you got two in California. Right. And I would say in March and Well, April, who's in Florida? You, who's in Florida? You said in Florida? Who's in Florida? Oh, I'm um, Julian. Julian. Oh. You know, Julian, he came to the party late. But, you oh. know, he knew Julian, though. Julian Dwyer. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so he's in Florida, so... He was talking about Florida, you know, similar to New York, but not quite. Mm. And, you know, Mike was talking about L.A., Mm. you know, and L.A. didn't quite the way he was talking, what he was doing and stuff. I was like, nah, he's not he's not feeling it totally. Mm. And in doubt, he's in um, um, Santa Monica, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's you know, he wasn't talking the same way either. Mm. But when Yusuf and I talked. We were hitting it hard, like, look, it's it's a problem over here. Mm. Mm. But now the tables have turned, though, uh-huh. in because of you know all the rising cases in those areas and stuff. It's like, oh, okay, so you kind of know, you know. I, I didn't really say that much to him about it, like directly, but I'm like, I can tell by the tone. It's like, yeah, you're you're feeling it now. You're feeling it. Just you're feeling it the way we felt it before, where like the. The tone of discussion mm. was a little bit, you know, offsetting. Mm. It wasn't like we were talking about, you know, COVID or anything like that, but just our daily tasks and, and mm. in a discussion is be like, it's almost like you're looking over your shoulder while you're talking. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay. So well, that, that was the tension of New York. Yeah. Especially because they kept, you know, in the early days, you know, they told you num- numbers at you like, Within the hour, like, yo, Ooh. guess what happened? And then guess what happened now? And then five minutes later, this happened. Then the next day, that happened. Then they start reading names. Uh, you then know, they start talking about, you know, different, you know, um, occupations and things like that. Every day was like a nightmare. The and, uh, the uh, the age ranges changed. But look, here's yeah. what here's what got me the most. It wasn't any of those numbers. Somebody posted or sent me a thing that they had gone. To uh, they had they, 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 the 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 body bags in this hospital. They were going yeah. to where all they were all over the place. And they walked through there, showing this body. It was only like less than a minute, and you go like, yeah. "Whoa, that's what's that more one. devastating." That was devastating. Forget the numbers. You Cuomo can get in and talk all he wants, whoever. That, but when that yeah. came in, phew, that was terrible. Exactly. 
numbers is one thing, but when you see body bags, that's a whole nother thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and and the New York Times actually did a story, like a, one of their video stories I saw mm. on um the Rockaways, and they had mm. like you know the different um a lot of brothers too, you know, Oof. um taking the body bags, you know, and moving them on into like the the mobile morgue trucks, yeah, the refrigerated like trucks, yeah, yeah, and um this one brother he was like. Looking at the toe tags, it's like, I know this guy, you know, Ooh. we grew up together, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. Or Mrs. So-and-so, you know, we used to run past her house all the time, you know what I mean? Because everybody he knew in the neighborhood, you know, was crazy. Wow. And yeah. different different neighborhoods, there's something more, more to this, man. Has to do with uh, I don't know, man. It's something more. Anyway, let's let's let, let's talk again. Like I said, man, what, what's a good time? What, this is a Tuesday. What, what do we want to do it on Thursday? What do you want to do? What, just let me know. Or you can always call me anytime whenever you feel like it. And okay, we can try this again. You what? You want to do it Thursday again? Yeah, Thursday. Let's try it on Thursday. But like okay. I said, like I said, I'm always free. So you just call me when it's your convenience. You know what I mean? And I'll right. just just set something up real quick. You know. Okay. Okay. Let me let me check this and and, and and if I put this up, well, I'm gonna check it right now. But if I put this up, then you'll know because <laughs> it'll be on okay. the chat. <laughs> All right, man. Later. All right. Thank you. All right.